right, sounds good. So my name is Alex, and uh, today I will be talking about how my SQL can attack you. So um, uh, again, my name is Alex. Uh, my background is my SQL. I have been uh, my SQL consultant and architect for a long time, and I worked at. Uh, MySQL AB, the company behind MySQL, we got acquired by Sun Microsystems Oracle, was a long time ago. And then I joined uh, AWS RDS, Relational Database and Service, working on MySQL. I joined about four years ago and I started as database engineer. And uh, I switched to security. So my uh, the security was my hobby for some time. I was playing capture the flag games. And uh, I switched to security. I uh, created a, a new team at AWS called Red Team. And uh, we're doing database research. And we have been doing database research about um, around open source databases, specifically MySQL and Postgres. And by the way, there is an, another presentation that I'm doing in the, in the same room at 1 p.m about how to, basically how to attack uh, open source databases. So, what we are going to demo today, and this presentation is about MySQL server attacking <coughs> client, and also this presentation is about how we found the CVE in MySQL. So this is the picture. This is what, we're, what I'm going to present today. Imagine that you have a MySQL server and you MySQL server is powering, powering your website and this website has been hacked. So now at this point, this bad actor controls the MySQL server. So now this guy has replaced MySQL server and now you're tra trying to connect to your own server because you want to fix that. Now it's not your server. It's this, this guy's server. So he's trying to attack you. This guy is trying to attack you back. So now you connect to the server and then this bad actor now takes the full control over your laptop. This is what I'm going to demonstrate today. So the question is how it's even possible. So what we will be talking about? There is a remote code execution in MySQL and MariaDB client. And it was silently fixed in 2019. And it's almost unknown. I don't know if you heard about that. Uh, and then we also found the new issue in 2023, a year ago, we found a new issue, uh, the way how to bypass this original fix. And then I will do a recorded demo, and then that's, that's basically it about this presentation. So, to really understand how this is possible, we need to look at the MySQL authentication protocol. So this is the very simplified version of how MySQL client <coughs> talks to MySQL server. So the first thing the MySQL client will do after the establishing the connection is that it will, it will greet MySQL server and saying, hello MySQL server, I want to authenticate. And by the way, I will be using MySQL native password as a plugin. And I have a username and password. And then the server said, okay, very good. I will be using this MySQL native password plugin. This plugin is inside of the MySQL server as well. And then I will be authenticating you. I will be checking your username and password using this plugin. Okay, now there is another situation where MySQL client says, I have username and password and I will be using whatever plugin. And what will server will say is, 
I don't know what this whatever plugin is. But let's use another plugin that I'm aware of. And my SQL client said, okay, I will try to load this another plugin if I have it. <coughs> so what happens here is MySQL server can actually tell the client what to do. And MySQL client will try to do that. So MySQL server will tell the client the name of the plugin. <laughs> and MySQL client will actually try to load that plugin. The plugin is a shared library. So it will use um, deal open on Linux or load library call on Windows. So that's, that was me looking at that code originally. And let's look at the client library code. Again, this is not server, this is client. That's MySQL client. And what client is, it can be a command line client or a GUI tool or anything. So this is the client code. And we can see here that there is a plugin name and this plugin name comes from the server. <coughs> there is also a plugin dir, a directory, which MySQL client will try to load this plugin. Okay? So the client loads the shared library. Okay? So this is the old code, 8018. This is old code. And then there is a protection there, the plugin dir. The client will only try to load the shared library from the plugin dir. The problem is directory traversal. What prevents, prevents the server, the rogue server, to push the client name that contains this dot dot slash dot dot slash on, on, on Linux or on Windows, right? It will just load the shared library from the arbitrary place on disk. So this is pretty bad. That's an arbitrary code execution via directory traversal. So, is it real? It has been found in 2019. It has been submitted against MariaDB. MariaDB and MySQL shares maybe 99% of the code. And it was submitted against MariaDB in uh, 2019, uh, Hacker One submission. And uh, this submitter talks about why and why it's dangerous and stuff like that. So MariaDB has fixed that. August 2019 has fixed and released that. And this is publicly available report. So what's the fix is? The fix is here. So it will check if the plugin name contains the characters that it should not contain. Again, Cyrus submits the plugin name. It should never submit the actual directory file and stuff like that. So um, that's the pretty much the essence of that. Now, the fix in November 2019, the fix was pushed to MySQL community. What is interesting about MySQL community now, Oracle owns MySQL, and Oracle never published the details of this vulnerability. So this is the internal bug number that no one can see except for probably Oracle employees. All right, but there is also a commit, and this commit in GitHub, it has the additional information. We can guess the CV number. Uh, the CV description is a little bit cryptic, but there is a clearly CV associated with that, and uh, the non-public bug is associated with that in commit. Right? So that has been fixed. This is the description, uh, why it's problematic and stuff like that. All right, so the fix is different in MySQL, in MySQL server. 
So the fix is just looking for the separator, and if it sees the separator, then it will say no paths allowed for the shared library. So far it's good. So here's the quick summary of the directory traversal. So old version of MySQL and MariaDB, old client versions, contains this pretty bad vulnerability. A server can push the full path and the client will execute. MariaDB has fixed that, MySQL ha has fixed that. But let's imagine for a second that you are running an old version of MySQL client. You may be running MySQL Workbench, you may be running MySQL command line uh, Linux utility, and you are trying to connect to the rogue MySQL server here. So the server, the, ser the server version doesn't really matter. You need to have the vulnerable old version of client. And then this client can be command line or GUI tool. So what do we need to reproduce that in the old version? So we need to have a control over the server. We need to have the vulnerable version of our victim machine. And then we need to have the ability to push the exploit code. Um, my battery is dying, so... Should be fixed. All right, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate this. How do we attack the client from the server? All right, so the first thing is, how do we push the plugin name? We will need to have the rogue server. So there are two ways how we can do that. We can take the server MySQL server, it's an open source. We can create a plugin, our own plugin. But there is another way is that we can replace the server. We can implement the protocol, MySQL protocol in Python. So here's our plan, our plan of attack. We write a rogue server with the ability to push the plugin. We will be loading an arbitrary file as a shared library. And then we'll push the exploit code so that we will be able to do something like a reverse shell on our victim, victim machine. So let's start with the MySQL server. I found this uh, Python library, which is called MySQL Mimic. And this MySQL Mimic is so easy to work with. It imp implements the MySQL protocol from the scratch. It's a native implementation of MySQL protocol. It also implements SSL, termination, everything. So this is the so easy to do. So you just do import, MySQL Im uh, Mimic import, and what the only thing that you need to do is to reload couple classes. So you create a custom identity provider, and then you can push the plugin name, and you can push the file name as a plugin name, right? So this is my main function in Python. It gets the file name as an argument, and the port, and then I will start it. So now our victim will connect to my fake server, and then it will try to do auth, and then I will receive this. So I use this as a test, the first test. I use ODBC driver. ODBC driver uses the same MySQL client library that other uh, GUI tools or command line. So here's the result. We can see that it's using the old MySQL client 8.0.18. And then when we try to establish the connection, we don't do anything else. We try to establish the connection. It will try to load clearly, try to load the shared library. So at this point, our injection worked. At this point, we have a rogue MySQL server written in Python. So what's next? We really need the 
ability to load arbitrary file as a shared library. So first of all, how do we actually load the code? How we trigger the code? So the answer is super simple. We can create on Linux, the shared object has a constructor init. Whatever we put the into init will always run. So a shared library does a, the function that it will use. But we don't care at this point. We don't care if the authentication will be successful or not. We just need to trigger the code. So here, I'm doing two things. The first thing is I'm creating a file. And the second thing on my Mac, I'm trying to open a calculator right, to demonstrate that this code will be run. So now, what is annoying here is it appending, it's trying to append the SO extension to the file name. So can we actually avoid this? Can we actually trigger an arbitrary file as a shared library? And the interesting thing about MySQL, it's so old, it contains code from 80s. This is probably one of the oldest code that is still there in MySQL. This is a string comparison function. From uh, 1984, written by uh, Richard O'Keefe, who is actually a very famous computer scientist. And it has a length overflow. So it actually have this length of 512 dedicated for the plugin name. So if we create a string long enough, then we will push out this SO extension. So it will update, it will, it will actually deal load an arbitrary file. So I have updated my Python script, right? So this is the original one, right? So we have uh, an old version, we have a rogue server in Python, we have a, our, our client connection. And now I have updated my uh, Python code to generate a string precisely so that it will contain it it will overflow our buffer. So this is the Python code. Don't judge me on my Python skills. <laughs> uh, so then it will start the rogue server and when it will start the rogue server it will call my function. So we need to know the plugin dir to calculate the um, injection stream correctly. But other than that, we can do that. So let's do this again and let's uh, create the shared library and uh, name it PNG file and put it into TMP. So now we have a picture but it's not really a picture. It's a shared library with a code. And let's start at the, the rogue server and uh, generate the injection stream no. <laughs> and connect it. So now we have our connection and we can actually see that it's being triggered. So it's actually worked. Right now, we don't see anything because this error has been striped off as well. But the way how we can verify that is just do S trace. And when we do S trace, it can, we can see that it's doing open at. And I will do the deal open later. All right. So now we have everything except we want to push the code with our exploit to the database administrate machine. How do we do that? And again, we can, we can push anything, but we need to have the actual code. So one way of doing that is to disguise that as a resume, so some social engineering. So if I send you a resume, my own resume, what will we do? What would you do with that? You probably save it. 
somewhere. You don't need to, to open it, to execute it, to do anything like that. I just need to have this file on your machine. I need to know where you saved it. So probably on Mac it's easy, somewhere it downloads, and on Windows it's also easy. In uh, Linux it's super easy, I just need to know your username. Uh, and when you save it, I have that code on your laptop. And now I can trigger it. So let's take a look at the demo. This is the recorded demo. And uh, I have the resume here. Uh, this is my uh, colleague, Martin, has sent me the resume. I'm the, the victim here. And as a rock server, I start my Python code. And users, a Rubin document, this is where I saved Martin's resume. And then I have my SQL workbench running on this server. And this is old, 8.0.13 even, right? So 8.0.13, and then I try to connect to the hacked database. It's not a real MySQL server now. I have my plugin gear here. And then I will try to connect, and so let's see what will happen. There we go, calculator. So my code runs. Now I own this workstation because I can run the arbitrary code. And you can, you can imagine what will happen there, right? So this bad actor who has access to the workstation can now start moving to other corporate assets and stuff like that. Let's not talk about it. Um, so now I have the Windows demo. It's pretty much the same. Uh, it's uh, just a different, it's demonstration of the same thing with the DLL. All right, so let's go next. So now I will talk about what we have discovered and how we discovered the bypass to that 2019 fix. So um, that was a year ago, and in a year ago, in April, the, the issue that we discovered also has been fixed. So if you haven't upgraded your MySQL client, you should do it now. So if you look at the code closely, right, um, you can notice that, I hope you can see this, the way how it is actually fixed is that it looks for the separator. The problem is it uses the UTF-8 aware, or rather not aware, function. So imagine that there's a, there's a CS name here, right? And CS name is the character set. Imagine that your client will use UTF-16, right? So there is a difference, big difference between UTF-8 check the set and UTF-16. Does anyone know the difference? So UTF-8 will use one byte for ASCII and then two bytes or three bytes, whatever, four bytes for non-ASCII. And UTF-16 will always use two bytes for whatever, right? So then it will use two bytes for ASCII. So if we will push the UTF-16 there as a character set, what will happen is it will skip over. So it will skip over dot, dot, and slash. And because this code only checks for the slash, then it will happily skip over the slash, and it will, we, will, we will have the bypass. So this is actually explains this. The MySQL, Oracle MySQL has fixed that issue 
by, uh, it, they call it impermissible check set, right? So MySQL client doesn't actually support UTF-16, UTF-32, U UCS as well. Uh, but it was, it was possible to push it, right? So they actually fixed that. But let's see how it works. So what we will need to do in this, we call it newer MySQL, but it's actually a year old at this point. What we need to have is to have the ability to push UTF-16 check to set to the client. So if this database administrator, for some reason, has configured their client to use UTF-16 check to set, which is not the default, then we have this issue again. So let's take a look at, this is a recorded demo again, so let's take a look how it, it works, right? So I put this UTF-16 and then I have my calculator again. It, again, this is newer version. Uh, that version was fresh a year ago, but it's actually worked. So we found a bypass to 2019 fix that will allow you to execute the code. So this is, unfortunately this is all black background, so I don't know how uh, visible it will be. But this, this is a Windows demo as well. So there's a DLL here, and this DLL will be triggered. And uh, this will use the MySQL command line client. So this version is 0.32. This is before the fix. It's after 2019 fix, but before that latest fix. So normally, it will say no paths allowed because the fix is there. But then if we will specify here default check to set equals UTF-16, that then the DLL will be triggered. So it is. Right. So now, it has been fixed in the latest MySQL versions, <coughs> and this actually demonstrate that it has been fixed. So again, this is the newer, newer version, uh, 8.0.33. And in this version, we try to uh, actually do the same stuff. So if we don't specify the default check to say, we'll say no paths allowed. But now we try to specify the default check to set again. Here's 16, and I'll say impermissible check to set. So that has been fixed in 8.0.33. So make sure that you have upgraded your MySQL in 8.0.33. All right, so our attack has been successfully uh, <coughs> implemented, uh, done on the older versions of client uh, machines. So we have uh, successfully wrote a rogue MySQL server in Python. Uh, we have uh, been created a shared library to push the code, disguised it as resume, pushed it to the client machine, and successfully triggered the code from the MySQL database administrator machine. So this is a quick recap of version fixed. 2019 original version, uh, original issue has been discovered and fixed. So if you're running MySQL client of uh, 2019 or older, MariaDB or Percona server, then it is vulnerable. The 2023 issue, you really need to run the newer versions of MySQL client again. Um, now, what clients are affected? The old versions again. 
everything that is based on the C, C++ version, GDBC or other languages, native implementation like Python implementation of the client driver is not affected. It's only the code that based on the MySQL library, MySQL lib. So again, upgrade to the latest version. All right, so this is the summary and conclusion again, but before I go there, I want to announce that we have actually found another issue, not related, not, not related to this, not another bypass, but we found another issue in MySQL dump that has been fixed last week and it has a CVE. I uh, will talk about, I will not talk about the details of that. So, uh, today or later, we will we will talk about that a little bit later. But uh, MySQL client is actually very interesting. Uh, MySQL client has the security issues all over. So MySQL protocol has been created a very long time ago, and it can actually accept different things. It can accept uh, garbage. It can silently ignore garbage. So, um, again, the summary original issue was fixed 2019. The new issue, uh, UTF-16 bypass, has been fixed in 8033 and 5742. All right, so, uh, before I go to the question, last slide. Uh, don't use unsafe UTF-8 or unsafe functions in C. If your project has a function from 1980s, you need to review that. You need to look at the code and make sure that it actually works with UTF-8 or UTF-16, right? It always upgrade. All right, thank you very much. Questions? Yes. So it seems to me that the original sin was committed by the uh, protocol architect. I think it's probably bad form for the server to say, I don't know what that plugin is, why don't you try this? Yeah. It should just say, I don't know what that plugin is, what else do you trust? Yeah. And then either the client can enumerate a list of plugins in its order of preference, and the server could just say, I don't understand any of those, sorry. And it, 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 it seems like it was trying to be too helpful yeah. by just saying, let me offer you one so we don't have to have this handshake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, MySQL has this notion of pluggable authentication. So anyone can write their own authentication and extend MySQL. The whole idea of MySQL was that it is extensible. You can write your own storage engine in MySQL. You can write your own plugin. You can write your own user-defined function. You can write your own authentication plugin, obviously. Yeah. So the plugin is a shared library. From one hand, it's a good design because it's extensible. But from another hand, the protocol allows you to do things like this. And unlike other protocols, the protocol is server-initiated. You basically, you need to have, the, the, the client will wait until the, the, for the handshake, the server will need to send the signature. Like, like in TOS, in the TOS handshake, both client and server have to agree on the crypto mm -hmm. library. Right. The, yeah, yeah. And, TOS. Uh, 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 TOS server mm -hmm. can never say, yeah. I don't understand any of those, let me give you one that yeah. I like, and let me, and let me yeah, I agree with you. it to you. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, this, is, this is something that is, I would say, interesting. Yeah, in maybe there's a moment in that era. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, good. I, I, I thought you were saying that the client should do a directory list of the files in that plugin directory and then see if what it says matches what's in the plugin list. That's what it's doing right now. The oh, server okay. will tell uh, the client, uh, server can switch 
That's another no, thing, no, right? No, not just telling the, the, the server, I have these, and then having it send back a string and then just looking for the, the file in there that it should compare the... Yeah, but this relies on the server pre-populating the client with the exploits. Right, and this, the server, the, the client can still do a directory list and see, uh, just, I have four items. Well, that would be a bad design on the client side saying, let me list all the ones I have conveniently in my library instead of some kind of fixed list. But, but even here, uh, the, the exploit's gonna be in some other directory. Right. Like, so, the, so, like the download, so. Yeah, the directory traversal should never happen. Right? The, the plugin name should be name. But it actually it maps as is to the file. So I think what, is, what you're saying, and this is, this is really important, is that the name should be name and not mapping the file. Right? What you do is you send the, the name, and then it becomes, becomes the file name with a directory. Yeah. It should be a list. Right, so the client should have like if name matches X, then hard code the plugin name. Else, another one, and so on and so forth. Right, but I then there's another. From, yeah, I think this comes from an old culture of we want to have security, but we just want things to work. So let's kind of cooperate, and you know, yep. I'll, I'll help you out. And now we're more sensitive to these things. And actually the, the uh, native implementations of the drivers, the reason why it doesn't work is that they do exactly that. They hard code the list of the uh, plugin uh, names, can, like, a, like a dictionary, plugin name to a file. I mean, you, do could, it. you, could, you yeah. can generate that. Yeah, exactly. So you can, you can generate hard -coded. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can generate it. You can do whatever you want, but mapping the the name to the file, I think that's, that's not good. Right. Any other questions? Yes? Question about the payload string. Um, you're saying you have to, as a database uh, client user, right, enable UTF-16 in yep. order for this one to really work. So just to be clear, you couldn't specify like the rest of the string besides the path separator as UTF-8 and only the path separator as UTF-16? because it would all be parsed as UTF-8? Yeah, so uh, let me show you. Yeah, so this is for 2023 bypass. You need to have the check the set name, yes. UTF-8-16. Then it will take that on the client side. The client will take that UTF-8-16 mm -hmm. and pass it to the function name where it checks if the separator is in that string. Okay. So if you specify something else or use the default, it will not work. Okay. Uh, the UTF-16 is two bytes, so it will skip over, skip over, so skip over. UTF yeah, and we will we'll need to, yeah, the, the string that will pass as, an, as a name should have uh, the even number of characters for okay. this to work. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.